Hello, this is Dr. David Green, CEO of the New Jersey Pain Network. Today's topic is the basics of migraines. A migraine is a chronic headache that affects people from anywhere from a few hours up to 72 hours straight. It's a complicated recurrent headache disorder. It's most common in women and those between the ages of 15 and 55. Most become less severe and less frequent with age. How common are migraines? It affects 18% of women and 8% of men. 30 million people in the U.S. have at least one migraine per year. Every 10 seconds, someone in the U.S. goes to the ER with a headache or a migraine. 70% of those have a first-degree relative who suffers. If one parent suffers from migraines, there's a 40% chance a child will suffer. And if both parents suffer with migraines, the chance rises to 90%. Also, over 90% of sufferers are unable to work or function normally during their migraine. There's a lot we don't know about what causes migraines. We know that there's a genetic component, an environmental component. We do know that they're invo it's involving an imbalance in brain chemicals because serotonin levels do drop during migraines. Low serotonin levels can trigger a migraine by letting too much blood flow through vessels that should be constricted, and that induces a throbbing sensation. What are typical migraine triggers? Well, there's quite a few of them. Various foods can trigger, such as aged cheese, red wine, beer, whiskey, food additives, cold food, citrus foods, MSG, and uh, caffeine. Elevated stress can do it. Weather changes, such as uh, barometric pressure. Strong scents, such as perfume or paint. Hair accessories, um, exercise, poor posture, skipping meals, and smoking. Thankfully, a small silver lining, no evidence clearly substantiates that chocolate is a trigger of migraine headaches. Thank God that's a myth. Now, symptoms of migraines, often a patient has a unilateral head pain that is throbbing and aggravated by activity. An aura is a visual or sensory symptom prior to the onset of the headache, such as photophobia or visual scintillation. Over 80% of migraines don't have an aura. Diagnosing migraines is tough because no objective testing is available. A CT or an MRI scan can rule out badness, such as a tumor that could cause similar symptoms. A lot of times it's diagnosed on patient history and a pattern of symptoms. A migraine diary can be extremely helpful. Now, making the diagnosis, the International Headache Society requires patients to have at least five attacks fulfilling three criteria. 4 to 72 hour duration, at least two of these, unilateral, pulsating, moderate to severe, pain intensity, aggravation by or causing avoidance of routine physical activity, and then one of these, nausea, plus or minus vomiting, and then photophobia and phonophobia. There are quite a few abortive treatment options available. Um, these include the triptans, which target serotonin, almotriptan, elotriptan, frovatriptan, Naratriptan, Rizotriptan, Sumatriptan, which is the most common, and then Zolmatriptan. Additionally, there's some nasal sprays uh, such as Migranol, Midrin, uh, Cafrigo, and some over the counter medications such as Advil Migraine, Excedrin Migraine, and Motrin Migraine. These contain, uh, as you can see, ibuprofen, some Tylenol, some caffeine, various components. Additional abortive treatment options include narcotics, barbiturates, and then quite a few nausea medications such as Reglan, Compazine, and Phenergan. When you start looking at preventive treatment options, uh, the goal is to lessen the frequency and severity of migraines. There are quite a few medications used off-label, such as high blood pressure medications like beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, antidepressants, or anti-seizure medications, um, and then Sonomagran. Interventional treatments, uh, there's quite a few of these. The FDA has approved Botox injections for chronic migraines. They can be given at three-month intervals. Uh, it's injected into 32 sites, which only takes about 10 minutes. It, it is covered if certain medications have been tried and failed. For chronic migraines, equals a distinct and severe neurologic disorder characterized by patients who have a history of migraine and suffer from headaches on 15 or more days per month with headaches lasting four hours a day or longer. So it really does need to be chronic migraines to get approval. Uh, patients with treated with Botox averaged eight to nine fewer headache days per month compared to baseline, 
as demonstrated in the this large study, the preempt study, that's a study that includes thousands of patients that is what prompted the FDA to approve Botox. Other treatments may include occipital nerve blocks, cervical facet injections, cervical epidurals, phenopalatine ganglion blocks, supratrochlear nerve blocks, supra or infraorbital nerve blocks, and pulse radio frequency of the occipital nerve. So there's quite a few treatment options that can help reduce the frequency and severity of migraines. What are the outcomes? Well, a study of 100 patients receiving greater occipital nerve blocks, over half achieved pain relief averaging three weeks. Uh, a retrospective study means looking backwards uh, at the effectiveness of greater occipital nerve block in refractory migraine patients. Use a mixture of lidocaine and steroid was used for the nerve block. 54% of migraine patients reported on being significantly better after the blocks and it lasted up to six months. So that's great. Uh, another study examined the benefit of peripheral nerve blocks in the treatment of migraine. They assessed 27 migraine patients before and after greater occipital blocks and supraorbital nerve blocks. Uh, each received a maximum of 10 injections with 85% effectiveness rate after six months. The top non-operative pain management in New Jersey is through the New Jersey Pain Network. There are several clinics throughout the state accepting over 50 insurances and providing over 25 treatment options, including all the ones just discussed. The board-certified award-winning doctors achieve excellent success rates on average. Visit us online at NewJerseyPainNetwork.com and then call us for more information and scheduling at 844-2NJ-PAIN. I'm Dr. David Green with the New Jersey Pain Network. Your pain stops here.